Hey, it's your pal Mike Shea from Sly Flourish here with the Lazy D&D Prep Show. In this show, I go through steps from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master while preparing for my Sunday D&D game. In this case, I am going through the D&D hardcover campaign adventure, Rime of the Frostmaiden. This show, like all of the work of Sly Flourish, is brought to you by the patrons of Sly Flourish. You too can become a patron of Sly Flourish by going to patreon.com slash Sly Flourish and signing up. Doing so gets you access to all kinds of exclusive material and previews of things that are, that are, that are to come. But most of all, you help me keep shows like this going so thank you very much to all of the patrons of sly flourish so yes last week began when the characters had stepped outside of the black cabin they had saved mccratus they had figured out the summer star did they you know i think about it i i think no i'm sorry i'm jumping ahead it started off with they had just one of the characters just got disintegrated Always a good, you want a strong start? Here's a sly flourish, strong start for you. Disintegrate one of the characters. That gets their attention. That draws them out of their issues of the day. They won't be thinking about the fact that they have to buy groceries later, right? Or how my, my kid's not doing well in swim practice, right? When you disintegrate their character on the spot, then they'll be like, what? So disintegrate a character is great, strong start. So it started off with one of the characters getting disintegrated. I'd already given hints that he wasn't really dead. And we had a character. So it was really interesting. And this is one of those things where like things don't make sense, but then sometimes things come out that do make sense. Oh, sorry. I reminded somebody I did buy groceries. So one of the characters, Shadow, Shadow has a, a Mind Flayer symbiote in his head. He is slowly turning into a Mind Flayer, right? Very, very slowly. But right now he's still mostly a drow, but kind of getting there. He has like psychic, the psionic abilities. And he got disintegrated. So he meets Macratus, and Macratus is talking to him about the fact that they screwed up trying to make the summer star, trying to fix the summer star. This is all the Black Cabin adventure, right? And so and the, the Black Cabin adventure is essentially the characters show up in a, at a cabin. There is a uh, disintegrated person on the ground. In my game, I made it in, which is probably too stereotypical. And there's this weird artifact sitting on the table. And the characters dork with the artifact. The artifact disintegrates one or more of them. It turns out it transfers into the ethereal plane where they meet the dead person, Macratus, who in my game was a gnome. Macratus then explains how they have to fix the summer star, but it's hard to do because you got to communicate with the players that are the characters that haven't been disintegrated to fix it. They fix it. Everybody, the summer star miraculously saves everybody. Everybody comes back and everybody's happy and they all link arms and they, they do a little dance as they walk out of the, the, the cabin, at which point they are attacked by uh, cold light walkers. There's your summary of the Black Cabin. The Black Cabin I found, I've now run it twice for two different groups and I've had problems with it for both groups. And the problem, some of the problems I have, much like I've had problems with lots of Rhyme of the Frostmaiden, is that the Summer Star doesn't make any sense. Like why is it putting people in the ethereal plane? Why does it draw people back out of the ethereal plane? Why? It's sort of this like, we're gonna get you. Like we're gonna put this device out there that does 90 points of damage and if it drops you to zero, you're disintegrated, right? A very Chris Perkins style poke in the eye right got what i'm referring to as a gotcha and i don't think gotchas are great in DD. some people like their gotchas i think gotchas end up being uh com combative competitive DD. right they are very much tomb of denial tomb of tomb of horrors style DD, which is i'm gonna get you and i don't like that style so the idea of like the dm dm kind of wants a player to screw with it but also doesn't want to be a dick and you can't really pick you gotta pick one are you gonna be a dick or not right so then it's a dick by saying okay your character is disintegrated. Congratulations. But then it goes to, then it turns it around and says, sure, you're disintegrated, but not really. And you're fine now. And by the way, here's a bunch of free hit points, right? So it goes like out on one side and screws you hard. And then on the other side, you know, makes everything better again. And it's like, what was the point, right? Like there's no real challenge. You just kind of get disintegrated and not. So that kind of sucks, right? And I didn't like that. But in this game, there was a way that it worked out. So the idea in my game that I'm changing is the Summer Star does channel energy from Thrun, this primordial elder evil, not a primordial, an actual elder evil trapped in a sarcophagus with a big crack in it down in the bottom of the city of Yethrin, which is buried under the ice. That energy is getting out. This, this device was able to channel his energy and it can create sunlight, right? It's channeled as energy. The problem was it was missing one of its control rings that actually limits the amount of sunlight it can put out. And when you just fire it up, it's just bang. It's just all, all the energy at once and it will disintegrate anybody that's around. They put a control ring in place, but it has nothing to do with the ethereal plane. So the cool bit was, well, how do we get Macratus and how do we get Shadow back, right? If the thing doesn't have this ethereal component. And I was like, wait a minute. You know who does have the ability to transfer in and out of the ethereal plane? Mind flayers. 
and the character who got disintegrated happens to have the mind flare symbiote in his head. So I had the symbiote talk to him and say, I can get you out of this, but I'm going to have to change you to do it. And Shadow, okay. And sh he said, okay. And it plucked out Shadow's ability to, uh, to cast Fairy Fire, right? One of his drow abilities was removed. He cannot do that anymore. And instead, it let him plane shift. And he could grab Macratus's hand and they plane shifted out of the ethereal plane and into the prime plane, Boom, right? And now they're there. Now, can he plane shift again? Is it a regular ability of his? Probably not. And I think I gave him another ability as well. Some other kind of one of the other, oh, levitate, right? So it gave him the ability to levitate. So now instead of, which is kind of funny because it's also sort of a drow ability. So now instead of, so now instead of being able to have fairy fire, he has levitate, which is really useful for a sorcerer, right? Who can do it sort of not at will, but like once a day he can cast levitate. And he has it because he's a drow or he's now this sort of half mind flayer. So that works out. Now, a, a problem that's occurring, and I might, I'm probably going to have to address this, is that at least with one of the players, one of the other players likes to joke about the fact that the best thing they could do is kill Shadow. That like he's turning into a mind flayer. That's not going to be good. We probably need to kill him. Right. And he kind of, and I, I've said like, no, you know that shadow's got control over his faculties. He's not going to betray you. He's not going to turn into some kind of thing, which is true. I'm not going to have that happen, you know, but they still kind of joke about, yeah, but what our characters think that like they see him, like every so often they see sort of an ethereal mind flayer version. Shouldn't they kill him? And I, 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 you know, I might need to reinforce the fact that not all mind flayers need to be murdered. Right. And that, you, and they know like, they're not going to go kill shadow, but boy, shadow and his players, Brian, Brian's had a lot of characters get killed. So, yeah. So the characters then, they, they, they got out of there. They, they have the device. They kept the device. They walk outside arm in arm singing their song. And then four Cold Light Walker show. We had six players. So I threw four Cold Light Walkers at him. And here's a fun tip that I will offer, which is keep track of the NPCs who die in your Frost Maiden campaign and have them return as Cold Light Walkers, right? Every Cold Light Walker should be a, character they know who died. I think that's a really cool feature. So in this case, it was Sephic Caltro. It was Orlo the Goliath that they met in the Cackling Chasm. It was Ravison, and it was Thumper, based on popular suggestion from the group here that Thumper needed to come back. Thumper is a sentient talking rabbit who talks a bunch of shit and was killed previously and now came back again uh, with 78 hit points. So... They came in and boy, I'll tell you, they like, talk about like feast or famine with those guys. One of the characters cast Turn Undead and managed to get three of the four within the Turn Undead and two of them failed their Turn Undead and started to run. And it's like, so immediately four went down to two, right? And one of them got attacked on the way out. One of the characters attacked him, even though they knew that was going to break it. They broke it anyway, which, but one of them, Ravison is gone, which means I have another Cold Light Walker out there who's still around. But Turn Undead is like this really big, like, on or off. And I even gave them advantage on the safe. I said, these are creatures that are being sent by oral and orals nearby. They're not going to be turned as easily as normal things. So I gave them advantage on turn undead, but still, you know, two out of three of them or, or two out of four of them failed to turn and, and ran and turn undead is like, you know, you're either going to get killed or you're not turn undead is a really powerful, powerful spell, which is why I didn't mind throwing four of them. But then like I fired a beam at one of the characters. So Perrin, Perrin was out there and I fired an I beam at Perrin and I crit on the I beam and the I beam on a cold light Walker is like 66 or something like that. It was, it did 55 damage. I think to him, the I ray does four D 10 damage. So it did eight D 10 plus three damage and ended up being like 55 points. And Perrin said, I have eight hit points and my maximum is 43 which meant he was dead on a single shot. And we were like, oh, and I was like, I was already rolling back because it was the first thing that happened. And I was like, did you not take a short rest? And he's like, no, we didn't take a short rest after he came out. And I'm like, okay, well, you definitely had the opportunity to. We can roll back and say you did, right? And he's like, no, it's cool, I'm dead. And he goes, oh wait, I've got cold resistance. And I was like, there you go. So he still survived, but man, they were getting pummeled. We had multiple guys down multiple people that dropped. It was really hard. But Cold Light Walkers, they're plus five to hit. And they get two attacks, 11 plus 14, 25 damage per attack, right, on these. And they can make Cold Ray. So they do a ton of damage. They're challenge rating five, but they're doing 10 times their challenge rating and damage output. They hit harder than their CR would dictate. 
but they miss a lot, particularly with this plus three to range attack. All my characters, everybody's got like an AC of 18 or above. They all have really high ACs. They don't get hit very often. I have to throw a lot of attacks out to hit them. And with these guys, you're either not hitting or you're getting hit for a ton. So it was they were it was very swingy. It was a much swingier battle than than I kind of expected it to be. So what happened after that? They beat the Cold Light Walkers. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm so glad I remembered. They beat the Cold Light Walkers. They headed out. They found a broken archway of Oral or something, a broken archway or totem. And then the Goliaths showed up. The cult, and it was the Goliaths who had, it was Auken's family, you know, Auken's, Auken's tribe. And they said, hey, you know, we've been hunting stuff and do you want to come back to our place? And they said, sure. So they went back to the, to Auken's, the, the Worm Crag, Worm, Worm Doom, the Worm Doom Goliaths. And they went back to their place and they hung out and they saw and they went, ooh, goat ball. We got to play some goat ball. And they said, yeah. And then they had a lot of conversation about what's going on. They learned a lot of secrets and clues. In fact, let's look at all the secrets and clues they learned because they learned a lot of secrets and clues. Worm Doom Crab. This was Sunday the 15th. They learned that the Summer Star can radiate a blast of pure sunlight, that they can transfer people. In a, they, we did not end up, this one can be struck through because we did not do that. I, I ended up changing that mid-game and said that no, but the Summer Star needs to be controlling. They're currently missing. They fixed that. Sun, oral fears of Summer Star. Yep. Summer Star is built from Nethery's technology. McCray has found it near some icy caves. Yes. Summer Star channels the energy of Thrun. Yes, they learned that. Oral created the Endless Night with the Power Festival. No. They, I think they did learn some of this. I think they, they learned... There was a bunch of things that they picked up and a bunch of new directions to go. They learned about the bell. They learned about the uh, the bell that can summon An Anjakuk, whatever its name is. They learned of Grimskull. I think they learned of the Codicil of the White, but I might have to reinforce that again, right? Oral created the Endless Night with a powerful spell contained in ancient bound scrolls called the Codicil of the White. Codicil of Frost I think they learned a lot of this stuff, but I'm probably going to reinforce some of this again. It doesn't hurt. One, one trick I've learned is it's okay to give secrets out more than once. It reinforces things that some players would go, oh yeah, we already know that, but it helps reinforce things. So not all players are getting all secrets clues all the time, right? The, the, the Sly Flourish rule is players are understanding about half of what you're putting out there. So it's okay to have, to, to bring it up more than once. They did learn about Janth Alwar and the other one. So yeah, so they are now at the, they, they, the beginning, the strong start for this new game that we're going to run today, which is going to be great, is Goat Ball. And I kind of want to jump right into like somebody getting punched in the face for goat ball. But let's start with the characters. I know that I've got, I think, I think Juliet is out, which is a bummer because she's a Goliath. Ilda, who is not going to be there, I don't think, is a half Goliath, half elf. She was, she kind of did her, she, she was taken by Hlyn Trollbane to the Worm Dune Crag Goliaths and kind of hidden away from her parents here for a while while she grew up and turned into a Goliath. So she's familiar with these people. They also welcomed her to the family. Oh yeah, we found out a bunch of secrets about Auken and Ilda. We finally revealed that yes, Auken's father, also named Auken, was in fact the is is Auken's father, but is also Ilda's father, and was killed and likely murdered. Right. So we learned a lot about that. Ilda was taken into the group. She's now a member of the Worm Doom, the Worm Doom, Worm Doom Crag Goliaths. She wept and they, they're like, is she always like this? She, yeah, she's very emotional. She just, you know, weeping at, at the fact that she is now a member of this tribe and finally has a family that she loves. Shadowhawk is slowly turning into a mind flayer. He is a drow, was a former drow. Now he's kind of half drow. Half drow sorcerer who has a sem mind flayer symbiote in his head is being hunted by the, hunted by drow. That might be a fun encounter. It's probably time for the Knight's Kiss to, to, to come in and tr try to grab Shadow. So that might be a fun encounter to do. Uh, Gorwan Alcazar, remember the Wan Alcazar thing, Secret Noble. He has a... He carries a holy symbol that has the ghost of Janth Alwar, one of the members of the Scarlet Brotherhood. Not Scarlet Brotherhood. One of the, <laughs> one of the members of the Arcane Brotherhood. Any other interesting tidbits there? No. We have Perrin Fat Rabbit. Perrin is figuring out the conspiracies that are going on throughout Icewind Dale and has a bow called the Mind Hunter, which lets him see the central nervous systems of creatures even through walls and can use the ability to fire through a wall once. Very powerful weapon. And then we have Candle. Uh, Candle in the Dark is a rogue former Zinterim, former Xanathar rogue who has killed the assassins that were hunting him and his family. So now he no longer has to worry about being hunted in Icewind Dale as long as the frozen, as long as uh, they can't send more people here. So 
So that's pretty good. It has a bunch of, so magic item wise are all really good. So I think the start is going to be uh, goat ball, right? So strong start, goat ball. And we want to take a look at goat ball. Let's, let's look at what the actual rules say. It's always nice to start with the rules, right? What is the actual, is goat ball one word? Oh, you guys suck. Let's search, come on, adventures. You make me go through all of this. And we have a Worm Doom Crag. It's got a nice map, so I showed off the map. Uh, I don't want to make Goat Ball a big deal. Here we go. Goat Ball has got a hyphen. That's why I searched it. Goat Ball is a team sport similar to Dodgeball. It uses a furry, misshapen ball made of stuffed goat hide and uses uh, and also requires a dozen or more elevated platforms, usually pillars of tree stumps arranged in a random pattern. The two teams of four players clamor onto the platforms, pass the ball back and forth, and try to knock their opponents off the platform. A team wins if all of its opponents have been knocked out of the game. To determine the outcome of Gopal, have each player in the game make a strength, athletics, or dexterity acrobatics check their choice. Add up the totals for each team. The team with the highest total wins. In the event of the tie, the, the game goes into overtime and the players re-roll. So we probably have one... How, how are we going to do Gopal go here? We have one Goliath for each member of the crag team so is it too is it is it too railroady to say that all of the characters are involved in goat ball like they're all they like and you know start that way like you know you wonder how we got this way but suddenly like even though i'm a sorcerer i'm playing goat ball against big powerful goliaths right and i think that you know I think it's kind of fun, but it is a little railroady to say like, but I didn't want to play goat ball, you know, tough. You're, <laughs> you find yourself and you're standing on one of these things and you're in goat ball. And I think sort of a random, so we have Goliath warriors, right? So the Goliath warriors are the ones, man, <laughs> plus six on athletics. One Goliath warrior. I say warrior like my dad did in New York. One Goliath warrior for each crag, each member of the crag team. A random player character gets smashed in the face with a goat ball. And I think we'll do like a series of opposed checks, right? And then see like who's still up and who's down. And then those, they keep going until everybody's gone. I think that that kind of works. Instead of like everybody rolls and then the, and then they're all totaled up. I think we can do sort of an individual one for each one, right? And that will warriors come out to play the character is not there gets punched in the face for uh, for gopal and is now unconscious for the session <laughs> i think they will have a large welt on their face that stays there throughout the session so yeah so i think gopal will work i think is there any reason why that wouldn't work you would basically have each character you know you would roll for initiative like normal just so we have an order for the character and then each one has to they can either like try to do something on their turn but they are essentially opposing a strength athletics check on the on the Goliath. So whatever they're doing is against the 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 evolving DC of one of the Goliaths. And we'll go through maybe we'll do three rounds, right? And sort of keep track. Like if it goes too quickly, we can do sort of three rounds of this. If it if it's boring, we'll not, right? I'll I'll see how it feels. One to three total victories. Or is it like last last person standing? Could be the winner. Like that might be kind of fun too. Yeah. So we have, so goat ball is going to be the beginning. That's a pretty strong start getting smashed in the face of the goat. All right. And we'll pick one random person. We'll do it. And maybe they get hit and maybe they survive, you know, that'd be pretty, pretty great. Goat ball is the first scene meeting the elder. That's can sort of dive up some secrets because they're probably, I think their journey to the dark duchess is their next, the next plan. And then the dark duchess, right? The, the dark duchess is their next their next path so that i think is pretty straightforward we we'll have to figure out what the encounter is that happens along the way while they're going from worm dune crag they're pretty the journey's pretty far because they're going from i think they're going from the spine of the world all the way up to the the, the all the way up to the sea of moving ice we could have a quick we could have a quick drop by 10 towns that might that might take too long but they're kind of going along the way they're going from the spine of the world they're traveling up going through 10 towns and then going back up to the sea of moving ice. They can decide, is there anything you want to do? We'll do a quick, like quick bit of downtime, right? 
and really just, you know, something that they can do in 10 towns. What do they want to do? We'll go through each character. They can decide, and then they travel to Dark Duchess. We'll probably move the journey to the Dark Duchess encounter after 10 towns, and then off they go. So those are, I think those are good scenes. Uh, we can link, we can link the Dark Duchess here. And that goes under our fantastic locations as well. That should cover the session right? Because Dark Duchess is going to require a few different things going on there. So secrets and clues that they could learn. So we, we can kind of reinforce a few secrets and clues. Uh, Oral is using a powerful spell captured in a, in a, in a, uh, a package of, of bound scrolls known as the codicil of the white. The codicil is held within Grimskull, a former frost giant temple to Oral. Grimskull is trapped, is lost in the sea of moving ice. Only on Anjuk, An, Anjuk, Angajuk, Angajuk. Only Angajuk knows how to get there. Angekuk can be summoned by a bell that once stood, bells don't really stand, but whatever, on the edge of the sea of moving ice. The bell was stolen by pirates of the Dark Duchess. I'm cheating because like I think these are all I think these are all things the characters already know. But again, it's sort of reinforcement. Let's see, Frost and priests of Oral pilgrim go on pilgrimages to Grimskull to be close to Oral, to be as close as they can, to be close to Oral. The energy required to cast the spell from the codicil of the white comes from the cracked sarcophagus of Thrun trapped in the lowest reaches of the frozen city of Ye. Got that one. We're kidding, I, I would say that like, we're on the downward path of this adventure that like, you can tell that I'm not throwing a lot of side things going on here. There's one big side thing that's going to come up, which is when they're when they're done with the Dark Duchess. I think when they return to Ten Towns from the Dark Duchess, Ten Towns is going to be under attack by the Shardalon Dragon. I think that that's the way I'm going to run it. They've known that the Shardalon Dragon has been a threat. They have chosen not to recon the Zardarok, the fortress at Zardarok, and so when they come back. I think Dugan's Hole will be destroyed. And I think the dragon will be attacking East Haven and then we'll probably be heading to either Kaer Dineval or to Bryn Shander by the time the characters get involved. So I think that that is, you know, I think that's going to happen, you know, in the next few sessions. Really, I'm sort of on that downward ramp where we're going to go hit all of these other, all of these other places. What else? I guess it is a secret uh, I don't know who will see it, but Zardarok's weapon is complete and about to be unleashed on 10 towns. That's, there's a big secret. What else? So those are like the three big angles, right? Oh, the Summer Star can melt the ice blocking the Caves of Hunger, which lead to Yethrin. Secrets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One more secret. What's one last thing that they can learn? Something they could learn from the Goliaths or something that they will learn on their journey. Their headed Dark Duchess. I guess the big secret is that the dragon can't see. Vanaturus can't see very well. So, fantastic locations. We have Worm Dune. Worm, I keep calling it Worm Dune. Worm Doom Crag. Whoops. We have... We're gonna have a place that they see along the way and a random encounter. Ornate metallic throne of the arcane, cracked marble altar of the Ar of the arcane brotherhood. Look at all the Ar arcane brotherhood. A desecrated obsidian altar, archway. Which of these are cooler? 
the de our decorated obsidian archway of the Arcane Brotherhood. That's pretty cool. The cracked marble altar of the Arcane Brotherhood. Then I think we're going to go with this guy, the decorated obsidian archway, right? And who will they meet there? Uh, could they meet a Vonaturus? Or not a Vonaturus, but who's the other member? It's probably time to meet the one of the last remaining members of the Arcane Brotherhood. And she's she's a nasty piece of work. It might be time to introduce like a new villain. And yeah, what's her name? Are these all the creatures from... I did Dragon of Ice Bar Peak. I did the wrong thing. I'm like, why am I... These are not the same creatures. Simpsons Adventures. I seem to have run the Frostbane. That's because I love that adventure so much. Wrong adventure, Mike. I know, I know. Take it easy. Avarice. I think it's time to include Avarice. She's badass, too. Fifth level caster. And she's an NPC. So, Journey to the Dark Duchess. Meet at the Obsidian Archway. So, what? So, what? Else? So, we could throw, if we're going to have her, then we want some uh, Arcane Brotherhood secrets. How many members of the Arcane Brotherhood are there in Icewind Dale is one question. Valish Gant who's in prison one two three so there were six except I re I'm replacing Nass so we're gonna strike Nass out we'll just move Nass down here right so there are five members of the Arcane Brotherhood Valish Gant Janth Alwar who's dead and with the party Dazan who is also dead sort of Valaine where is she currently where is she? What does she want? Janth is the ghost. Uh, Janth Alwar is the ghost that's inside Tourmaline in the adventure in Tourmaline. And it made a lot more sense. I, if I had thought about it, I would have replaced Janth with Nass, but I didn't think about it at the time. And now instead I'm replacing it the other direction and saying Janth is, I'm replacing Nass with Janth. And that way there's like a common. So, but I, I think if I was doing it again, I would have had Nass replace Janth because I think Nass is kind of a cooler, a cooler character. So that is a secret. There are five. Five members of the Arcane Brotherhood in Icewind Dale. And probably the two, so I think Dazan is going to be out of the picture, right? I don't I don't think they plan to go to the Lost Spire. So they're not going to meet the the Dazan, the Dazan clone, the Dazan simulacrum. My other group did, and that was fun, but it, it doesn't have to happen. Right? Things don't always have to happen. Things things can not occur. So I think Dazan is out of the picture, which really leaves two that are active. Right, Valish Gant is in, he's trapped in Le Revel's End. I don't think anybody's going to bother to talk to him. So you have Valaine and you have Avarice. And, you know, both of them are kind of nasty pieces of work. So uh, both of them seek the power trapped under the ice of Yethrin. It's possible. So, like, what would they, you know, if they're having a conversation with Avarice, they meet her at the portal. I think she's just going to be mean, right? If they don't travel back, they will never meet a dumb Trex with Elaine later. So I guess I, I got to, you know, this is the get in the heads of the characters, right? So we have, we have Elaine and we have Avarice. Let's, I guess let's take a quick, let's take a quick read on them, right? So what's Avarice's story? Cruel and vindictive, tiefling trained in arcane traditions of evocation. She likes to use her magic to destroy things. Hunger for magic items knows no bounds. I think it will be cool if they show up. If she she has gargoyles, gargoyle, gargle and gurgle, super bodyguards and scouts, right? I think they're going to be beefy gargoyles. She might empower them with spells. I want power and I'm taking it. Yeah, so she's she's very just straightforward. She might be, you know, who would be a cool, George Hurst might be a cool archetype from Deadwood for her, right? Real powerful. I think that would be cool. And she just feels she deserves it, right? She's just like, she's she's rich, she's powerful, and she deserves it. And and they're in her way. Yeah, I think one of her, should Captain Turner be uh, a, a golem? Could she have a golem with her? An armored golem? That would be pretty great. I, li I linked to the stat block for Avarice, but really I don't wanna, I wanna, I already created a page for her. Because I got a link for her there. And I copied all our stuff over. Wolcott and Turner. Do we want gargoyles? Or what if she had a pair of armored golems, right? Make her a little bit more tough that she has a pair of flesh golems. 
And instead of AC nine, they're like wrapped up in plate armor and they're like AC 18 and they attack with weapons other than slam, or maybe they've, they're just armored with fists. I can use them like the, the, the tomb guardians in tomb of annihilation, but those are, those will definitely be tougher. Wolcott, you know, Turner and Wolcott are her two. That'd be pretty great. Yeah, so I can just kind of introduce her now, right? And I think she's just there and she's angry. I think the fun bit is she will have just destroyed another encounter. So let's take a look at potential encounters that occur could occur there. There's actually two good sources uh, for finding encounters for Icewind Dale because uh, Xanathar's Guide has good Arctic encounters too. So if you if you if you find that the ones in Rhyme of the Frostbane themselves aren't great. You can grab encounters by tier here as well. So we're gonna go down Dicewind Dale, Wilderness Encounters, blah, 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 blah. And let's roll some dice. Do, 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 do. Got my Wormwood dice roller. Wormwood's got a thing going on right now. Let me roll the 19. 19 would be a herd of beasts. Ah, eh, boring. Four is Cold Light Walker. No, we just saw a bunch of them. Three. Crag cats. So maybe a pack of crag cats. They are challenge rating one, 34. They have spell turning. So I think that the characters will arrive. This is always like a fun, I, I like I like doing this. Did I, did I, where are my notes? One of the things I like doing is mixing a couple of random encounters together, right? So like they meet Everest at the, and her flesh columns. Just smashed. I said, flesh columns, or, or should we just make big ass gargoyles? What about those huge gargoyles? Right? Weren't there, um, instead of flesh golems, four armed gargoyles, right? Our CR2, those are pretty weak. Why can a four armed gargoyle make three attacks, one with its bite and two with its claws? It's got four arms. The giant four armed gargoyles are large, 147 hit points, CR10. Five attacks. They actually have lots of lots of arms. Those are probably those are probably too hard. I don't are there any other gargoyles stat blocks? I could just beef up the normal one. Yeah. I could give her, you know, sort of armored gargoyles, right? And give it more claw attacks. So they can attack more off. I don't know. How much one would beef these guys up? What's the plus on a flesh golem? Seven. I think we're gonna stick with the flesh golems. I I mean she could have both. Right? Maybe she, maybe the gargoyles aren't really combatants. The gargoyles are like scouts for her. She's kind of like, a, what if she had more of them? Maybe she has more than two. She has like four gargoyles. I think she's got one flesh golem and and a number of gargoyles. I think that's probably better to go. And and she can put like spell, the, 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 the gargoyles are empowered with spells and we can kind of randomly determine the spells that they have it can be fun. I think we'll do that. And they just destroyed a bunch of crag cats. Maybe one of them is begging for its life. Crag cats, can they speak? They do not speak, but this could be an awakened crag cat, right? I think that'd be kind of an interesting scene. That'd be that'd be cool. So what is Valaine doing? So we know what Avarice is doing and what she wants. Valaine is kind of a different, you know, they're both probably seeking the same thing. She's a necromancer. I don't know if we're gonna do this professor orb thing because I already got one of those. Valaine was probably looking for, uh, well, she wanted to find out about the caves. She was probably hoping to get, she was probably hoping to get Dazan's book. She knew that Dazan was there. So Valaine too. So it looks like both Valaine are seeking the power in the ice. Avarice hopes to get it first. What's she doing at the archway? Is she trying to use the archway to kind of, for teleportation and failing? I think that'll work. So we got, we got that. So I got, well, I got a lot of stuff going on. Monsters, we've got gargoyles. We have fro flesh golem. We have goliaths. We have, I think, is there a fight that they're gonna face today? I guess not, that's okay. What else? Any other interesting monster? Eh, not really. And then treasure, we'll throw a relic in here. Bur burning blade barrier, burning Insignia of Bishaba that cast Blade Barrier. What if we're going to do Wall of Fire instead? So we have a little strange magic item. We'll make this of Imix, the fire, Prince of Elemental Fire. 
So let's take a look, more importantly, this is something we ought to do, is look at what's going on with the Dark Duchess. Because I don't think I've, I read it, but it was long ago. So we need to figure that out now. So let's go to Icewind Dale. And we go down to the Dark Duchess. So, ancient white dragon Avernturus uh, has placed some of her horde in an abandoned ship called the Dark Duchess, the Luskin pirate vessel, stuck, blah, 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 blah. Having remained aboard the uh, Icebound Hulk, being deserted by the crew, Captain Rudolph Blue Moon still watches over his riches even in death. Pirate cannibal characters might also be drawn to blah, blah, blah. So they see it. They approach it. There is an ice troll crept across the ice, hoping to find something tasty, spooked some kobolds in the hold, chased them into the cabin. Troll is trying to break through. That's cool. Ice trolls are cool. Character can surprise the troll if they remain quiet. Ice trolls are nasty. They have the main deck. It's a good, good map, right? We can owl bear that map up. I'll do that before the game. Part of it has been ripped. They can figure out that it was ripped open by a dragon. A bunch of different places to explore. Cool stuff. Captain, the captain's journal. Blue moon, a dark duchess, and a man of in charge. Gray bag of tricks. That'd be a fun one. Four thick translucent players of ice. Uh, a near perfect replica of a wand of Orcus. There's a lot of good treasure here. Yeah, so you know it, it's pretty pretty straightforward. A pretty straightforward encounter. I love Avantaris the dragon as a as an NPC. So I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be really fun. This is gonna be a cool. This one looks like it's a really cool place. I don't I don't nothing's jumping out at me. I'm like wow that's a problem. So I think the Dark Duchess that that is going to be pretty easy to run and i think it's going to be a lot of fun to do and the main thing is in the horde is the bell right the bell is there too uh, and the bell is what they they need so yeah lots of opportunity for role playing some good combat real good straight real good straight kind of encounter i don't know who did it i don't know who did what parts of these things but boy that, that was a good one so i think i'm all set uh, i've got lots of secrets and clues i've got a good strong start i've got what scenes are going to occur lots of fun scenes Fun interaction with Avant Avarice. Bunch of secrets and clues, good locations, good NPCs, monsters, treasure, all kinds of good stuff today. So I think we are going to call it a day. So I want to thank everybody for coming and hanging out with me while I prep my game. It's always a great pleasure to do so. If you want to help me out, you can do so in four different ways. One, you can subscribe to the Sly Flourish newsletter. Two, you can subscribe to me on, on YouTube and check out new YouTube videos every week. Three, you can support me directly on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash slyflourish. Or four, you can pick up any of my books, including Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master and the Lazy DM's Workbook. I want to thank everybody for hanging out today, and I will see you guys next week. So have a great day and get out there and play some D&D. &D. Thank you very much.